So I was actually just working with schools in New Jersey. And one of the schools I worked with was led by a principal named Lori Kerr. And they did this staff wellness day. And it was really fascinating that, you know, they brought me in to speak, but the whole day was focused on what the staff needed and feeling supported. And they just had, it was just all about the staff. And Lori kept saying this to me over and over again. This is all about the teachers taking care of them. And so it wasn't like diving into data or, you know, like any, any of the stuff that you hear in education. It was just about taking care of the people we serve. And when I walked into that building, I felt this incredible vibe from the staff and just the appreciation. And it, you could tell it wasn't just because of this day. It was something that was going on all the time. And little things I noticed when I walked in was student artwork all over the building. It was such a powerful thing to say. And as I was leaving the school, one of the teachers said to me, you know, Lori does such an amazing job and she totally changed the culture of our school that we're so excited to be here. So Lori walked me out as I was leaving, I said, I told her that because a lot of times we hear compliments and then we don't share them. And I'm not that person. If I hear something good, I share it with people right away. So I asked Lori, I'd love to hear about what you're doing. I'd love to share it with people in the world. And she took the time to be on this podcast. So I know you're going to enjoy it. I really love talking to Lori. I know she has such a tremendous impact and you can learn a ton from her. So, so thanks for being here. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kuros. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have Lori Kerr. I was actually just at her schools um, just this past weekend, um, seeing amazing things that are happening. And one of her teachers actually pulled me aside and just said, Lori has just totally changed the culture of the school. And I actually, I was telling Lori before I got on and I, I was telling her as I walked to the building with her that I was just so amazed with the energy of you know uh, of your staff and you can tell that people just feel really appreciated you did something really interesting with a professional learning day i'm going to ask you more about it uh, but Lori's actually you know she's taught uh, she's worked in central office uh, she's been a principal several years very focused on building relationships building culture so Lori, i am really excited to have you on i actually i know you're a big eagles fan so i wear my bear shirt you know <laughs> yeah because you know got, i gotta I wear got my gotta, eagles yeah. lanyard around Stop here somewhere it, right, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go birds. Sorry about that. Go birds. Yeah. So yeah, I, was, I made a Bill Belichick joke before in our, our last podcast. And I thought you were gonna get upset, but like, why would you get upset? You guys beat them, right? So like, who cares, yeah, right? You beat the exactly. Patriots. Exactly. We'll, we'll always remember that. Yeah. Really special. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. So Lori, if you could tell everyone who you are, what you do today, how you got there, great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Lori Kerr. I'm a principal of Seaview School. Very proud principal. Um, we are a pre-K through four building in a small district in South Jersey. Um, our district is just K to pre-K now, pre-K to eight. Um, we have a small elementary school, small middle school, and then our high school is kind of, the middle school is down the bike path. We have like this cool bike path that runs through the town and then the high school is across the street um, that we send our kids to. So I started as a teacher uh, right out of college, always knew from the time I was like a little tyke. Uh, shout out to my aunt. She was a teacher and I wanted to be just like her. And then I taught for about eight years and I knew I wanted to become an administrator all along. I like to get in front of people. I like to talk to people um, and I like to help people solve problems. So I became actually a supervisor of curriculum in the district I'm in now. I was there for about a year and I wanted to get back to the kids. So the principal job opened up. And I went for it and I got the principal job. And every day that I've come in this building, I've had a lot of fun and a lot of smiles ever since. Hey, just tell me about like, actually, I remember like I went from principal to central office and that was a, that was a hard transition um, because you have to do paperwork in both jobs. But yeah. when I would do paperwork, you know, as a principal, I'd be like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And then I'd get up and I'd be around students. And then when I went to central office, I get up and like, oh, I'm around another adult. It's not as fun, right? Like, it, like yeah. I, I needed the energy, you know, of the students. Like, what was like one of the transitions? Maybe one of the struggles, one of the opportunities you saw as you went from like a you know central office job, you know, to a principalship. Like, how yeah. how was that transition for you? 
the best thing that happened was that type of transition, even though I met someone once and I was like, oh, I was surprised at curriculum, but now I'm principal. And they said, I'm so sorry. I'm like, oh no, no, it's, it's a good right. thing. Like really? it was my choice. Yeah. Um, but I, I had such a good hold on the um, curriculum because I had been doing it that when I came into the role as a principal, I could really lead from an instructional point where yeah. I knew the curriculum so well. So that was an advantage for me. Um, one of the struggles was, and I didn't realize this at, at the time, I had a lot more freedom and it's not a bad thing as a curriculum person than I do here um, as principal. Like, I feel like I, I could if I needed to run out to do something, right. I could, I could do that. We're here. Like, I feel like if I need to, like a day off or something like that, I'm like, okay, wait, this, I need to tell this person this, yeah. I need to tell this person that, which is, which isn't a bad thing for me. I, I just need to be more organized and on top of things. Um, but I feel like when you're the principal, especially it's just me, I don't have a vice principal. I do have an admin team that's super supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just, I feel like I always, and part, part of it's me being in my personality. I always want to make sure my right. ducks are in a row. Yeah, you actually, you know, uh, is, when you say that, you kind of remind me of like my dad. And I know that's like, I know you're not that like my dad, but you know, there's a, there's a certain ownership that my dad had over the restaurant that he felt like it was really hard for him to be gone because he wanted to be there for, you know, the people. Like when you said that, that's the first thing I thought of. Maybe that's a hor I don't know. That's a horrible thing to say, but it just no. You <laughs> you love your dad. You think very highly of your dad. So you just keep comparing me to your dad. He, he took such pride in you know that place, and so it was harder for him to leave. I remember actually we were um, on a family vacation, which was very rare, and <laughs> it was like the weirdest thing. We were we took a Winnebago. I think that's what they're called. You know, yeah. like that. You like live in the camper, and it was like, we were there for two days and. It was like two in the morning and all of a sudden we we're like driving back. <laughs> He's like, I can't do it. I, I got to be back. It's like, he just was so struggled with that. And I don't know if it's a good thing, but he just, you know, the, the, you talked about this before in our other podcast, he, he took such pride in that too. And that, that really mattered to me. And I, you know, I try to find that balance, you know, to like step away, but I do have tremendous pride in the work that I do and things I have. And, you know, speaking of pride, um, one of the things I noticed about when I, when I came into the school, I, I know this wasn't your school, but I, you know, I, I get the vibe. Um, there, there was like student artwork everywhere. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I, I know that sounds weird. A lot of the kids heroes were on the wall. Sometimes we like tell the kids who here's who you should, your hero should be. And as opposed to like the kids who they like kind of look up to now, cause it tells you a lot about the school who's there um like is that was that like is that intended i actually mentioned this when i said this i don't know if you know this but the art teacher there like came out to me mm -hmm. and she said, that made such that made such an impact on me that you said that like I yeah absolutely really appreciate it too right so like when you like when you walk in your school is that something that's really intentional like when people come in when they when they see what's on the walls like is that something you think about or is it just kind of it is what it is yeah, so their their artwork's impressive up there. I see them at the um, middle school, and I've had them at the elementary school. So I'm always looking like, who did this? Who did that? And it's right. like amazing when they draw their hero, and you can tell who their hero is because yeah. that's that's talent. Um, but if you notice behind some of the artwork, when they graduate um, Bellhaven, the, the um, middle school, and they started this, I want to say in like 2000, 2002. So they're starting to run out of a little bit of room on the one side. They all get a tile, a ceramic tile that they decorate. They can put a quote, they can put a person, they can put anything they want, just a design with their name on it. And that gets plastered on the wall and it's there for their legacy. Um, mm. So this, that school, Bellhaven and Seaview both were really about like, hey guys, this is about you. Tell us what you want to do. I love it. Kind of portray yourself and we'll run with it. Like we're kind of just here to facilitate you. Um, and it's been cool to see. I've had teachers that I've hired. I've had teachers that I've interviewed. I've had different staff members who come back. And the first thing they do when they get to Bellhaven is find their tile on the wall, which is really, really pretty cool. That, that is pretty cool. Because there's an ownership over it, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, I know this sounds weird, but when you, when you have ownership, you see the, your work, you're less, you're less likely to vandalize the school, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I, we had a, we had a, a student, uh, like an Apple genius bar, but like we had a student version of this and yeah. this is totally dating me, but you know, I don't know if you remember this kids used to flick the keys out of the laptops. Like they would like rearrange them or they like flick them out and they would like switch them around and it would like just be so complicated because you'd see these keys. And then when we had the student genius bar 
that stopped immediately because the kid beside the kid, it's like, I got to fix that. So like yeah. stop doing that, right? Yeah. So like when kids actually see that they have ownership over the school, the school is better taken care of. Whereas it's like, are they just temporarily there? Or is it something that, you know, really, it really is meaningful. And I actually, I, I didn't, I didn't just feel that from, you know, the student work, but I also felt that from your staff, like they were, I, I will tell you this, I, I mentioned this previously. I walked in, I was like, what is going on here? Like what, what, what's like, what, what is in the, what is in the water here? Cause something's going on. Cause they were just pumped to be there. And you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of negativity in education, you know, and I've, you know, I've been to places where it's like, people don't want to necessarily be there. And, you know, you're trying to like get them excited, but you know, it's, it's been a, a lot of, a lot of stuff has been really wearing on people. And, uh, one of the things I thought was really interesting was the day I was lucky to be a part of was you were like, this is all about the staff. This is all about the staff. So can you talk a little bit about like what that day was and why it matters so much? Cause I know this wasn't our first time for you. This is something that you've done yeah. over the years. Absolutely. So it's, we call it our staff wellness day. We take one PD out of the year and it's hard to do because you only have so many, yeah. um, but we've made it sacred. Um, I started it when I was a curriculum supervisor, kind of went out on a limb, asked my superintendent who was super supportive and said, sure, tell me what it's gonna look like and what you wanna do. Right. We had come to this point in time where all we did was talk about self-care. Oh, educators are burnt out. Well, they need to do self-care. Oh, they need to take time right. for themselves. They need to do this. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, right. I, you can keep telling me self-care, self-care. Like, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I think I'm taking care of myself. I'm not really sure. Right. So I just said, like, what if we just do a day that's all about educators? And we started with like a staff meeting in the morning to try and get in the PD that we needed to get in. And then we asked the community and we have a very supportive community like, hey, can you help us out? So we had yoga instructors. We had nutritionists. We have yeah. healthy cooking. Um, we just let them walk. We gave them an hour. We called it deer. Just what we do with the students drop everything and read. Right. Yeah. We did that when we were young. Um, and we just let them sign up and had the whole day where, yeah, we took the whole afternoon and you guys get to pick what you want to do. And if you do it, if you're not planning anything, you're not doing anything, you're literally just showing up. They don't have to pay for anything. Um, everyone's pretty much volunteer based or the district covers yeah. the cost of whatever they need. And the staff reviews were like through the roof. Like everyone right. loved it. They really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We got a lot of staff that just said, we're so happy that we got to do this. Even just spending time with a coworker laughing right. about right. them doing push-ups next to me, whatever it may be. So that has since evolved and we started bringing in like speakers. Um, so we really try and like hit a home run, which we did this year with bringing in a speaker that really talks to teachers about, not about what they need to do, but right. how, what they're doing already and how they can kind of fine tune their craft. So, and then me. we also- That was me. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, that was you. George came and knocked it out of the park this year. Yeah. Um, we provide a healthy. I was snack. like, are you talking about someone else? <laughs> nope. Talking about Last, me as a third person. Like two years ago, we had a, we two years ago we had a comedian, and they love that too. But I mean, you provided plenty of laughs. Yeah, throughout. Pretty funny. There wasn't. I, I always jokes. look. Yeah, whenever we have a speaker, I always look around to see like the vibe in the room. Cause I'm always just like, all right, well, if everyone's yeah. on their phone um, and even you who said like, I'm not afraid if you're on your phones, go ahead, like scan this. I want you to tweet about me. Sure. I mean, people were like eye to eye engaged coming up to you after. And when you start the day with that kind of energy, it lasts all day. So after they left you, they had a little healthy snack from a local um, business and went about, we had pickleball, we had hit classes, we had oh. cookie decorating the whole nine. Okay. Um, so I gotta, I gotta ask you this question. So I don't yeah. know how long you've like, I don't know how long you know me, but probably the last, I don't know, four years, I've been very focused on being healthier, like way healthier. Mm -hmm. And I've like, I've always worked out, but it's like, I've got my eating in check. Now I'm not like a hundred percent. I'm not like keto or anything like this, but I eat pretty healthy. And you kept saying, I don't know if you noticed, you're like, Hey, there's a healthy snack. There's a healthy snack. And I go into districts all the time and there's pretty rarely healthy snacks. Like it is like pretty bad. And I, I don't know if that's like, why is that so intent? Like, why was that so intentional? And I, I actually think it, you know, I, there's like a, a Seinfeld episode where Elaine, I know I'm like obsessed with Seinfeld right now. There's a Seinfeld episode where Elaine complains because every day it's a cake. There's always cake, right? She's like sick of cake. And then she's like out of cake. 
you know, like she's out of it. And then she, then she's going through like sugar withdrawals and she's struggling with that too. And I actually think it's kind of intentional or, you know, like we kind of tell them what, we, you know, I know it's like, we are what we eat, but like that, that kind of focus, when we talk about self care, um, you know, it's like, it's okay to treat yourself. But I think, you know, if you're treating yourself all the time, which I used to do, um, that can get you in trouble. So like, I, I look, when I think of self care, I think of like working out, trying to, you know, eat healthier or stuff like that too. Why was that so intentional? And maybe I shouldn't even be asking this too, but I, I think it is, yeah. I thought it was like really interesting when you, uh, you're like, Hey, we got healthy snacks. You got healthy snacks. And I thought that was really powerful. Yeah. So it's a celebration day. Right. And, yeah. and Elaine's right in Seinfeld when there's a celebration, especially I feel like at a school or a place at work, like somebody's bringing cake or somebody's bringing yeah. cupcakes. Like my door every day is open and I can't tell you the number of kids that come through and they're like, it's my birthday. Yeah, here's a cupcake. Do you want one? And I always say yes. I don't always eat it, but I always say yes, because I want them to feel that I va right. value their birthday. Um, but on Wellness Day, I want the staff to know, like, the district is providing you a snack that is good for you today to fuel your body, because I feel like if we put it out there, it'll be like, all right, cool, it's a celebration, like, let's bring in a cake, and it's like, nope, we're going to celebrate you, and we're going to have an acai bowl, which right. some people might argue that that's not the healthiest thing, but we've had, like, energy bites in the past or a veggie tray or something like that. Um, this year was the first time we did the acai bowl, trying to do something cool that people really do enjoy, yeah. even if it is a little treat, but it's good for you. Um, but we wanted to fuel them. We wanted to let them know we appreciate you be, without just doing like a, a cookie. Like if you give yeah. a teacher a cookie type of thing um, and it's something that they look forward to. And I feel like we're always trying to feed them um, to show them we appreciate them. And this was just a different way to do it. Well, okay. So I, this, this is my trick for anyone, you know, this was my trick. You have to, if you're like trying to get your, cause when you eat, like, I love cookies, cookies are my weakness mm -hmm. and they always taste good when I have them, but I always feel worse after. Right. Yeah. And so my trick when I eat healthy is not to like, just eat healthy foods cause they're healthy, but eat foods that I love that happen to be healthy. That's like, right. that's, that's my trick. And I, it, it does actually make a difference in my mood. Uh, you know, and I, I go into school districts, and they're like, Hey, we have this breakfast and everything is unhealthy. Like everything. And I'm like, I, I can't, like, I know I'm going to like, if I eat any of this stuff, I'm going to be a terrible speaker today. Cause I know it's going to kind of like catch up to me, um, with my energy levels, things like that too. So I, I just appreciated that. And you know, people might, like I said, but like, I've, I've been on the other side of it where I've eaten really unhealthy and I know how that affects my mood, how it affects, you know, my energy levels. So that, that I thought that was really powerful. Um, you told me about this and, and I, I'm curious to know about, about it. You talk about the Sea View shout out and yeah. um, you, you said something about like with students doing it, like what, what is this and why does it actually matter so much? Yeah. So this kind of caught me off guard and I don't know why it did. It was just something I didn't plan for, but it morphed into exactly what it needed to be. The resiliency team this year. So we have a team of teachers that are into resiliency and student mindset and, and making connections with our kids that need it the most, aside from just in the classroom, um, came up with a Seaview shout out. And Seaview is the name of our school. And whenever they see so a kid doing something that they think is impressive, and there's no criteria here, like if you see a kid that they did something impressive, they write it down on a piece of paper that says Seaview shout out, they check off what trade it is, give a little blurb and I read it on the announcements and I deliver it to the kids class with like a big like, yeah, see you shout out, here I come. And I interrupt instruction and the teachers love it, um, especially when it's in the middle of a test or something. But it started at the beginning of the year and I was like, okay, let's introduce it to the teachers and tell them how it works and all of that. And then we just started it. And it took about a month, maybe two months until I had a fourth grader who came down and was like, oh, Mrs. Karen, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, hey, what's up, sweetheart? What can I do? How can I help you? She's like, I need that paper. I'm like, what paper? She's like, the shout out one. I have to give my teacher a shout out. I'm like, uh, oh, okay, let me get it for you. Like, I was totally caught off guard. I was probably in the middle of something yeah. that I didn't need to be doing right then and there. Huh. I grabbed that paper as fast as I could. And I was like, here you go, girl, tell me what I need to do. Um, and just the, the fact that that little girl came down here I don't know where she was supposed to be or what class she was supposed to be in, but right. I was so proud. Like you took that on and made, made this statement to me and now you're going to commend your teacher. So like, there's so many different things happening that give us a reason to be proud and give us a reason to celebrate. Um, so we have like teachers who fill them out for other teachers. Obviously all the teachers are filling them out for kids, but I had a teacher who went to a kid's basketball game over the weekend and then saw another kid cleaning up the hallway hmm. And it's just evolved into, instead of just like, oh, your schoolwork type of thing, which it was never really meant for just doing work. 
to like a whole community thing. I have substitutes coming in and giving shout outs to a teacher when they see something that they were inspired by. And I'm just like, every time I get one, I'm like, this is really cool. Like I had an entire kindergarten class give a shout out to a second grader who came in and read to them. I'm like, how cool is this? I love it. Well, you know, the next evolution is when you do the shout out. <laughs> you get one of those, right? You got it. You got, that's literally my shout out button. So I love it. it. So, you know, and Lori, it was amazing to, to have you on the podcast. And you know, it's like interesting is, uh, I, I came to your schools. I saw how amazing things were, but it was actually a teacher shouting you out that got you on the podcast. That was like, I, like, I need to have her on. Like, yeah, like I, I'd love to have her on because, you know, that teacher went out of her way to say how much of an impact you made in schools. I'm like, hey, like I have a book called, coming out called What Makes a Great Principal. Here's literally a great principal I want to highlight. And so, Lori, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for um, all you do to really focus on, you know, bringing out the best in your staff to you know, support them. Cause like, I think, you know, early in my career, I was so focused on doing what's best for kids. I sometimes lost sight of helping the adults, right? But doing yeah. right by the adults is actually doing what's best for kids. So I know right. you're doing a great job of that. So Lori, and I'm telling you, everyone, this is not going to be the last you hear Lori. So Lori. <laughs> thank you, George. I can't wait for your book. Yeah. Well, it, hey, listen, I better. like feel guilty because you like, I'm like, I have to go back and do edits and say, oh, by the way, P.S. Go see what Lori does. <laughs> thank right. You. So, awesome. hey, That's anyways. Thank you so much, Lori. Everyone, thanks so much for listening. Make sure you check out. We're going to have links for Lori to, to connect with her uh, in the future. But Lori, thanks so much. And say hi to your staff for me. They were absolutely wonderful. I will. Thank All you, right. George. I appreciate it. All right. Have take care, everyone. Bye-bye.